273 TIPS. Treasure Coast Crime Stoppers works for you. That's 1 800 273 TIPS. Funded by the Office of Florida's Attorney General. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jupiter, and Indian Town, Martin County's Heritage Station. It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Welcome back to the second half hour of the show. I have a school board member, Amy Pritchett, and and really important topic today. Um, Folks, a few things I want to go over about this topic is the book ban. Um, One of the things that first caught my attention to it was author uh, James Patterson said, oh my gosh, my Maximum Ride series is being banned from the books. He wrote the governor about Martin County banning this. So I went and I looked the book up. And um, what I found was that it is for ages 13 to 17. It's recommended on Barnes and Nobles, on Walmart that way. And I had went to Amazon, and at the time it said 12 and up, and I just went back uh, yesterday to review for the show, and it says ages 10 and up now. And you have to understand that Martin County did not ban the book from the schools. It took it out of the libraries of elementary schools, which is below that 12 and under. Um, It's still available in your middle and upper schools, so it's not banned. It's age-appropriate, like Barnes & Noble says, uh, 13 to 17. And I wanted to bring up Amazon in particular because I found out, I called them up, and I said, why is this now ages 10 and up? And she said, well, that's based on uh, user reviews only. And she gave me this little bar chart that you can click on where it says readers 10 and up, and it's not available on all pages. For example, um, the box set didn't have a link, but the individual book, uh, one of the individual books did. I went there, 15% of parents said it was for 10 and up, but 42% 13 and up, and Amazon puts the book is recommended for 10 and up. So be warned about that, folks. Amazon, that's, that's very disingenuous. The majority of parents by far thought this book was more appropriate for older kids. But um, I just, so it made me question the rest of the books. And folks, you know, you've heard of Mice and Men, Catcher in the Rye, Harry Potter, Lord of the Flies, 1984. All these books have been banned. There's memes going around on Facebook. Folks, they haven't. I have the list of books uh, that have been removed from the Martin County school system. These books are not removed. These are classics. The books are supposed to be age appropriate. Before we go into all this, Amy Pritchard, um, I want to cover a little bit. I had reached out to the chair of the school board, uh, Marsha Powers, and she gave me a little bit of information I want to share, and then I'm going to let Amy talk about all this, because this is really important, folks. We're seeing book bans, and it scares us. Uh, There's folks that are... um, comparing this to Nazi Germany when they banned books and burned books from the population. And that's not what's going on here. You can still get any of these books in public libraries or Barnes and Nobles, uh, Amazon. If, if you're a parent that feels your child should be reading some of these books, and I, I have a, some of the quotes that came out of these books, I would love to share with them on air what these quotes are, but I would be banned forever from coming back into this studio. They're that bad. And those were books that were were removed because our school system did not feel like it was age appropriate. So I just kind of want to cover that. And Iggy, if you can put up uh, picture picture A, uh, the Florida Department of Education has a training slide deck that uh, references Florida Statute 106.29, district staff member criteria for selection and maintenance of public schools. Materials must be, one, free of pornography and other, and all materials prohibited under Statute 847 point zero two are not permitted in a school library or media center two materials must be suited to students needs and their ability to comprehend material presented and finally materials must be appropriate for the grade level and age group for which the materials are used and made available iggy the second picture please uh, slide 11 said materials that are neither pornographic nor prohibited by section 847.012, we're going to talk about that in a second, may still be inappropriate for students. Media specialists should always err on the side of caution when selecting materials. That's what they have done here. So what is uh, Statute 847.02? It's a third degree felony. If you do not remove harmful materials, sale or distribution to minors, or using minors in production, 
uh, prohibited materials. Harmful materials, folks. So what do we mean by that? Iggy, if you could play clip one. A person may not knowingly sell, rent, or loan for monetary consideration to a minor any picture, photograph, drawing, sculpture, motion picture, film, video cassette, or similar visual representation or image of a person or portion of a human body which depicts nudity or sexual conduct, sexual excitement, sexual battery, bestiality, sadomasochistic abuse, and which is harmful to minors. Any book, pamphlet, magazine, printed matter, however reproduced or sound recording that contains any matter defined in 847.001, explicit and detailed verbal descriptions or narrative accounts of sexual excitement, sexual conduct, and that is harmful to minors. An adult may not knowingly distribute to a minor on school property or post on school property any material described in subsection 3 as used in this subsection. The term school property means the grounds or facility of any kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, junior high, or secondary school, whether public or non-public. This subsection does not apply to the distribution or posting of school-approved instructional materials that are by design serve as a major tool for assisting in the instruction of subject of course by school officers, instructional personnel, administrative personnel, school volunteers, educational support, employees, or managers, as those defined in 1012. Folks, this is the most important part of this. Any person violating any provision of this section commits a felony of the third degree. A felony of third degree. So we have our schools responsible for making sure our children are not being exposed to inappropriate materials. If somebody finds that they are exposing them to inappropriate materials, the person responsible for that felony in the third degree. You have to ask, what else is our school supposed to do? Uh, next, Early Learning uh, 20 Education Code. This is in Chapter 106, Florida Statutes, 1006.28. Duties of the school district, uh, district school su superintendent and principals regarding K-12 through instructional materials. District school board, the district school board has the constitutional duty and responsibility to select and provide adequate instructional materials for all students in accordance with requirements of this part. The district school board also has the following specific duties and responsibilities. Each district school board must adopt a policy regarding an objection by a parent or resident of the county to the use of specific materials, which clearly describes a process to handle all objections and provide resolution. The process must provide the student or resident the opportunity to proffer evidence to the district school board that any material used in the classroom made available in the school library or including reading this list uh, contains content that is pornographic or prohibited under the previous statute I wrote read to you. It's not suited to the student's needs and their ability to comprehend the material pre presented or is inappropriate for the grade level and age group for which the material is used. If the school district board finds that the instructional material does not meet the criteria under this paragraph, subparagraph A, or that any other material contains prohibited content under subparagraph B, the school district shall continue use of the material for any grade level or group for which the use is inappropriate or unsuitable. Folks, our school is in a spot here. They had to do this, and I'm telling you, the materials they removed made me blush. And again, I cannot even read them here. Um, finally, if, you, if you're interested, if you go to fldoe.org, Parental Rights, the Florida Department of Education has a web page that regards this. And uh, Iggy, if you can put up uh, Pick C, Pornographic harm, Harmful Material complaints. You have a section there. It says Florida law makes it illegal for an adult to knowingly distribute to a minor on school property or post on school property any pornographic or harmful materials as defined in law. If you have any questions, concerns regarding the potential introduction of pornographic or other materials harmful to minors within your child's school, please contact your local state's attorney's office. Why the state attorney's office? Because it can be a felony in the third degree. Amy Pritchett, I just spent 10 minutes going over our I'm show glad here. You did. But uh, it's in Florida statute. This is law, folks. So here you are. You're on the school board, and, and welcome. This is your Thank first you. year serving, and this is a really big topic. And people are running around saying they're banning books. They're not banning books, they're making them unavailable for minors. And you said it several times in your reading there. A minor is under the age of 18. Most of the children that we support are K through 12. They are ages 4 to 5 to 17. Some of them are 18 when they are seniors and going into the adult world. But that's why 18 is an adult. 100%. 18 years old is an adult. Anything under 18 is a minor. 
And these books, there were some of them that were, again, this, the James Patterson series I brought up, that was only removed in elementary schools. Correct. The very, and they the, were in the elementary. They moved them to the middle and high school. And just for your listeners, banning is a trigger word to get people inflamed. We're not banning books. Banning books makes them unavailable ever, such as they did with Dr. Seuss books not too long ago. You can't get some of his books on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble, or in the stores because they were considered to be racial, because they portrayed Asians and blacks in a disparaging way. They were banned. We did not ban any books whatsoever. And I'd like to let you know that when Governor DeSantis brought together the library media specialist training, one of our people who's in Indian River was on that committee. She sent them some of the material and it bounced back because of the safeguards on the email because they were so sexual and pornographic, proving the point. If you can't read it in public and it can't go through an email service, why are we supplying this material to minors? And again, folks, this is something this, the school shouldn't be. And I'm a parent of a team. I expect my school to not be providing inappropriate materials. I'm trusting my school to not provide inappropriate materials to my child. So you have a, a huge responsibility here. And to hear this compared to Nazi Germany ban, it just, it's, a, it's just to inflame it's, and it trigger. The opposition uses specific words to get people upset. Nobody wants If they want to read those books, they can go to any of our libraries. They can order them on Amazon. They can order them through Barnes & Noble. They can go into any drugstore and take it off of the little spindle that you can get the books from at the drugstore or at a supermarket. 100%. That's, if you're a parent that believes your child should be reading that books that really are above their age, adult. you can. You adult can. Adult. That's your child. I can't stop you. Mature themes. But the school... That's right. The school should not have this uh, Why should taxpayers fund something illegal? What's going on now? Because you're having this this fight, and I know there's a lot of emails that are coming in, and parents are are really upset. So, Well, what they've done is they're not even – the emails are all the same. They're a form email that one of the other authors, Jody Paco, sent out through CNN, MSNBC, her website, her TikTok page, and provided the wording. So en masse, we are getting these emails signed from people who live in Michigan, Australia, England. It's it's absolutely crazy. They are not even Martin County residents, but we are getting some from Martin County residents. But why are we here? Why do we have to put laws into place to protect our children? Why are we even here? Why are we fighting with parents over something that is common sense? I would think parents would be appreciative of this because my question as a parent is, how did these books get there in the first place? They need to be vetted, and it's incumbent upon the media specialists to read those books. There was also complaints that the person who filled out the forms didn't read the books. I can assure you she had a panel of people and those books were read by many different people. Uh, Tina Marie, Brevard County liberals are brutal in promoting the Florida Department of Education statutes as book banning. As a reader, I see this every day. We are fighting so many organizations. This is really a nationwide thing, this big book banning, you know, this big book banning media blitz. Amy, tell us, what is the process that somebody goes through if they think a book is inappropriate? So if if you find a book offensive or inappropriate, you would fill out a form on the website. It's very easy. You go to the the Martin County School District website, and there is a parental port there, and under that parental port is is the form to fill out. And in doing so, you you give them your name, and you reference the book, and then you show what it is that you feel is inappropriate or offensive. That form then goes to the library media specialist and the principal at that school. If they agree with your assessment, 
the book is removed right then and there. If they don't agree, it goes to the next level, which is your director of curriculum, um, who currently is, is Mary White, but she will be leaving at the end of, at the end of the school year. She would then look at it and make a determination. If she feels that it's inappropriate, it stops there. So there's two places right there. If neither of the stop gaps feel it's inappropriate, it then goes to the school board. We haven't had any that come to the school board. What we had was the opposition coming, staging a very dramatic um, event. Again, if you will. I, I know that you know there's different people, and I think. Um, th- th- they were comparing it to Nazi Germany Correct. again. You know, and it's just... But that was done specifically to get people upset. None of them read all. any of the passages. None of them looked at what we were talking about. And I'd like to tell you that there's over 300,000 books in the Martin County mm-hmm. School District. Just under 100 were removed, leaving 299,900 <laughs> books. So think about that. I mean, that yeah. is such a, a minute Everything is relative. Percentage. Right. And those books, as I stated, are available throughout the libraries in our county and beyond. And folks, my email, Casey Ingram at pm.me. If you want to see the passages from some of these books, I'll be more than happy to email them to you. I just can't say them on the air because it is they're that bad. So That's that, they're that bad. They're so... Oh, I can't imagine a parent, I can't imagine, and maybe you're out there, but I can't imagine a parent approving those books for children. And I ask, why do you want your children to be exposed to sexually explicit right. and pornographic material as a minor? Uh, Jan Mazingo, I appreciate you tuning in. She said you're all doing an amazing job. We're just trying to enlighten the public. Uh, you see book ban, and we're all busy today. I, this is one thing with the general public. I don't care what topic we're talking about. We're busy, and we're all guilty of just reading the headline and moving on. And that headline is Martin County Schools are banning books. Yeah. It's not true. And the and I, I reiterate, I, I encourage any of you who are on our side to stop using the word ban. You are feeding into that mentality, that mentality that we are somehow doing something injurious to our children, when in fact, they're protecting tender. They're, they're protecting tender them. children. Yes. We're protecting our children, and they're there to be educated. They are. They are not there to be introduced to topics that are for the family to decide whether or not they should be introduced. Nobody's even talking about that. And, and the other side is saying, well, my child, it's okay for my child. Then by all means, do that in your family time. Take them to the library. Take them to all the events you want to take them to, but not on the school's dime. 100%, Amy, and I appreciate you, again, protecting our children. And, and you know, Jan, she said, we're having to clean up inappropriate things that were tolerated, and she's read some, and they were absolutely repulsive. I can't say that enough. I, I, I was shocked at what Well, it was, was embarrassing to send them to you, but I did it because I wanted you to be prepared for what we would be talking about and the fact that none of us want to say it on the air. That's exactly right. We, we, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. And, you know, Jules Hicks, uh, they're not banning books. They're removing sexually explicit books. Removing, not banning. That is exactly what this show is about. Yes. You're not banning anything. No. Any parent can go buy these books if you feel that your child should be reading them. So, you know, the outrage, it's, it is staged. Um, and I, I appreciate I, the school district. I appreciate you coming on here today. Absolutely. Anytime. Um, it, it's such an important topic. And there's a lot of things that are going on with the school. We have a few minutes here. Sure. But I, I appreciate you talking about this. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's not a book ban, folks. It's it's not. It's not. It's not. It's just making sure age appropriate material is available to the students. And yeah, I, I can't say anything more about that. That's what it should be. It's real hard for me to to try to rationalize talking to a parent on the other side, telling me that I am a, a Nazi because I won't allow pornography. Right. Right. I had a parent ask me, "Is is is." Is sex inappropriate for children if it's between two people of the same sex? And I said, sex is sex. I don't care who is performing it or what is written. 
it is inappropriate for children. So to even be asked that question was that's not what this. That's I not marveled what this is about. at it. I that's marveled at that kind of. Where's your common sense? There, there isn't common sense here in this aspect. I mean, I thought, well, if we're going to argue they should have all materials, why don't we have Playboys and Playgirls in the, the or school? liquor or or, or, or right. let's let's roll some. Uh, weed and and give it to the yep. kids because you know they're old enough to understand it's why why don't we give them driver's licenses yeah start driving at eight that's what's crazy about this it's age appropriateness and everything we're bringing up is age appropriate things when it's exposed to people and keep in mind if a parent gets a flyer home asking if their child can watch a pg-13 movie you'd better understand it translates to the books too hundred percent it does and that's a really you good need a point. permission slip to watch a pg-13 movie in the school you certainly need a permission slip to read something sexually inappropriate i don't know and again folks i'm, I'm just going to shout it out again watch out for amazon this was such a bookseller i'm guilty of it i looked at the age level of books when i buy them i never looked you had to click on another link under the appropriate for those are the authors over. trying to make more money they want a larger audience they so do they're, they're pressuring the bookstores to change the ages so that they can sell more books but and it, it's scary because only 15 percent and there's always going to be a percentage of people sure. that said it's okay for a 10 year old 42 percent said it's 13 and up like the rest of the world well why so do you think all the negative watch that the negative comments come up first right a hundred ninety percent could be favorable, but ten percent aren't. Those are the ones because they're salacious and they get you triggered. Salacious cells. Uh, Shane, political operative, you're going to be on the show end of April. He's going to be talking about. Uh, he was here recently about uh, Senator Amanda Chase using red flag laws uh, against him and other people, and he's going to be back end of April uh, talking about uh, the January six. Um, you know takeover on Capitol Hill. So that's going to be a super interesting. interesting. Uh, you might be very interested in what he has to say. Uh, Shane says, we're going through the same thing in Virginia. When the book passages were read in session, they made the young people in the room leave. leave. It was so graphic. Then they voted against the bill to remove or at least have parents' consent for the kids to check them out. It's One of our parents who was reading one of, one of the sexually inappropriate books, she said she paused and she said um, if there are any children in the room th they should probably leave. And the parents shouted out no let them stay no way <laughs> if she read anything what about what you provided me no that's way. what we're, and she read one of those excerpts and folks don't forget this is a third degree felony if the school provides right. it and that's going to fall on your media specialist that's going right. to fall on the person that said no this book's appropriate we're going to leave it here in the library and then you have parents will say oh martin county broke the law right you they can't will. win they will <laughs> You can't win, but at the end of the day, we're going to win this. School board, you're protecting the children. It's yes. age appropriate materials. It's all about the kids. So, um, wow. Uh, Jan, Jan just said they showed my kids our movies in middle school in Martin. I mean, that's just shocking, too. You not just, anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. That's why we have elections, folks, and it's really important who we elect and to really try and. and find out about them and you came into the show many many of the candidates do and i i love that so we can get a little bit about who amy is or who the candidate is it's so very very important especially when it comes to kids i think so many of our positions are important but the school board yeah uh, that's that's our young and uh the, our kids are depending on and us to protect them that's what it is for me it's and everyone that's that's sitting there they're for the children and uh, Jewel says Martin County School District is following the law. That's the important thing to realize here. They're not banning books. They're following the law. They're removing books, not banning books. Removing books from ages that are inappropriate to read that material. Minors. minors. Keep saying that word, minors. minors. They're minors. They are, they are if they're under minors. 18, they're minors. They are all minors. And I say age appropriate because the 13 to 17 year old with Jane Patterson book, those are That's still fine. in the middle school and upper totally school. Totally appropriate. It's a great series. And, and that is that wasn't the point. The point was it wasn't appropriate for the elementary That's school. Right. And the Jody Picot books were adult, mature themes, suicide, adultery, not things that you want minors to be reading in school. And again, if, if you do want your child to read that, you can get that yourself and keep it at home. Absolutely. So you had something really big. I have to mention, we're almost out of time here. Um, you have a 
new superintendent coming in. We do, and we're looking forward. We're, we're looking forward to working with him. We we really enjoyed working with uh, Dr. Malay. Uh, we were very surprised that he was leaving, but I think he's leaving us in good hands with with Michael, and hopefully we'll have more news on that in the days to come. Yes, I'll be reaching out to him to have him on the show so we can get to meet him as well. I know Dr. Yes. Malay always came Having in. Having great conversations, right. and he's for the kids. That's 100%. And he's already in the district. And, and folks, everybody was worried about how much it would cost to hire a new one. You hired from within. Yes, which I like because I think that's what we want. We want we want to um, give people the opportunity that are, that are working for us to, to, to rise up. Yes. Teachers, 100%. administrators. You know, if you can cultivate from within, you've got a great retention. That's right. That's right. right. That's and right. recruitment. That's absolutely right. So, Amy, we've got just a few minutes left. What else is happening in the school that uh, parents might want to know about? Well, um, graduations are coming oh. up. That's always exciting. It'll be my first time uh, in a cap and gown since I graduated. <laughs> um, the three high schools, there's middle school graduations. There's a lot of uh, spring things going on. Uh, the schools are having events for uh, selling flowers and, and uh, Murray Middle School are, are painting uh, flower pots for sale ah. next Saturday from 10 to 12.30, I believe. I bet those will be so cute. Yeah, painted by the kids, which yes. is nice. Um, and the, I just attended the music in our schools, which was fabulous. It was just a fabulous gathering at the Martin County High School. There w it was standing room only, and oh, wow. it was just wonderful. And I also participated in the history fair, and that was a fun competition. And the kids are going to um, Tallahassee. The, the two finalists are going to compete from the middle school. Fantastic. Yeah, and we also have Spam Robotics, and they... Uh, are going to Houston to compete. So there's a lot of great stuff. The sports teams are doing wonderful. The kids are just, that's the stuff we want to focus right, on. Right, right, right. The good, solid curriculum, the extracurriculars that make the kids into who they are. We have a great CTE program for kids who may not want to go on to college. They're getting internships, and then they're getting right out into the community with great jobs, great paying jobs, and no student loans. Wow, that is fantastic. Yeah. And, and there's such a synergy between Martin County School District and Indian River State College. Yes. So we've got the Promise Program. It's so wonderful. Everybody can with, get a college education new, if the they new, want one. Uh, bill that's passing. Yes. Uh, yes. School choice has been enhanced. Yes. So absolutely. we're excited about that as well because parents need to choose what's best for their kids. I always think that's best. Competition it, it improves everybody. Yeah. Uh, so, folks, this is Amy Pritchett. She's with the Martin County School District New School school board member, if you want to review those uh, statutes I was talking about, uh, early, early Learning 20 Education Code, Chapter 1006, particularly I read from 1006.28, also uh, in Crimes and Obscenity, Florida Statutes, 847.012, 847.012, Harmful Materials, Sailor Distribution to Minors, and if you have a complaint or a book that, um, you know, it wasn't removed and, and uh, you, you want to make sure somebody pays attention to it, go to fldoe.org, Parental Rights. Obviously, contact the school district first because they will definitely address it. Yes, thank we, you for having me. Hey, Bridget, thank you. Thank you.